He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gadget Professor Show. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am the Gadget Professor. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It is April 24th, and we are on episode 154. Now, if you do the math, you'll know that uh, when we hit 156, the Gadget Professor will be celebrating three years, three years of doing the Gadget Professor, and uh, it seems like just yesterday that we started. So uh, in any event, we've gone from being heard uh, absolutely nowhere, except my mother watching the show, uh, to being heard over 169 countries around the world. So uh, we've grown a lot, and we really appreciate that. And uh, we've been to uh, CES and NAB. We were just invited back to NAB uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, we're very proud of that. So uh, we wouldn't be there without you. So thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any friends or relatives or anybody who kind of likes gadgets and likes to hear a little bit of technical news and uh, see what's going on in the industry, then uh, certainly invite them to the uh, Gadget Professor Show. We'd love to have them on board. It's a uh, family safe show, so uh, you'll never hear any cuss words here at the Gadget Professor, that's for sure. And uh, I try to take a, uh, a new topic, a new gadget every Thursday and bring you something that uh, will add pleasure to your life. I do some free apps, some free software, and talk about a, a gadget. And uh, speaking of gadgets, I have to tell you right off the bat that today I will be uh, reviewing my very, 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 very number one favorite gadget that gets uh, 100 points out of 10 uh, for recommendations. And uh, uh, I have camera two kind of set up on the TV, but today we're going to do the, uh, the Roku uh, stick. And uh, it's, it's quite, a, quite a cool device. So uh, stay tuned and we'll do a nice review for you of the uh, Roku stick. So, uh, you know, you know the deal. Uh, you can uh, watch The Gadget Professor anytime, 24 hours a day, just by going to the website. And that would be at thegadgetprofessor.com. And when you get there, if you scroll down halfway, you'll see a newsletter. And all you got to do is uh, just click the newsletter button. And uh, it's right there. Just put in your email address. And uh, every Thursday evening, as soon as the show is posted, the show's coming to you live right now from Scottsdale, Arizona, where our studios are located. But every Thursday evening, somewhere between, uh, I don't know, 7 and 9 o'clock Arizona time, uh, we're three hours behind you guys back east, uh, you will get in your email box, if you sign up for the newsletter, the free show notes. And you want the free show notes because what that will do is give you a synopsis of everything we talked about on the show. And uh, it will have everything hot links, so you don't have to take notes now and, you know, what was this software or what was this app. If you get the show notes, it's all hot linked. It shows you an outline. You just click it, and uh, there you go. So definitely sign up. Shine up. <laughs> definitely sign up for the show notes, and I think you'll enjoy that. Also, uh, you can follow me on Facebook, and that would be Facebook forward slash The Gadget Professor. Uh, I have all kinds of things. I have been now better about posting new things. I have two new posts just uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, I'm posting the uh, NAB interviews, which are very interesting. We have one with uh, MXL microphones with uh, Mr. Perry Goldstein. That was great. And I just posted this morning uh, one uh, where we interviewed the uh, president of uh, StreamStar, uh, Rado Toth, and uh, they have some amazing new products, uh, StreamStar, and you'll want to check those out for sure. So. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll see all that. And then last but not least, uh, you probably want to follow me on Twitter, and that would be uh, at Gadget Professor, at Gadget Professor. And uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll want to follow me on Rebel Mouse. That would be Rebel Mouse forward slash Gadget Professor. This is in the show notes, but uh, if you follow me on uh, Rebel Mouse, you'll see every new gadget that comes out within the hour, and it shows you a pictorial. It even has the interviews that I've posted on Facebook and uh, YouTube, so uh, you'll really keep up with what's going on. And this, this, this page changes dynamically, so uh, you can go back to this uh, every half hour and there'll be something new and fresh on there. There's the interview that we just did with StreamStar uh, already up on the Rebel Mouse page. So again, you can email me 24 hours a day, seven days a week at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. That would be thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com, and I do try to answer all my email. So uh, that takes care of that. Now, 
Uh, I've had a couple emails, actually I've had three emails this week alone about people not being able to find the gadget professor on the Roku box. And as I said, we'll do a revo uh, or we will do a Roku 3 uh, stick review shortly. But uh, I'm pretty easy to find, actually, on the uh, uh, Roku box. There's two areas you could find me. One way is by going into channels and just doing a search on Roku, the gadget professor, and it'll pop right up. The other way that's probably the easiest is go to the Tech Podcast Network. Uh, we are a proud member of the Tech, Post, Tech Podcast Network, and I think there's like 35 or 4,500 other podcasters on the network. So not only is my show there, but you'll have thousands of other shows there. Uh, and if you go to the Tech Podcast Network on the Roku channel, uh, you'll see the Gadget Professor. We're listed under devices, and every single show is there. So if you like to watch the Gadget Professor on the big screen on the Roku box, uh, it's easy to do. Just go to Tech Podcast Network. We're also on Blueberry, which would be B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. They're uh, spelled a little strange, but uh, we are also on that network, too. So let's jump right into the show news today. Uh, this is a very interesting story, at least to me it is, and uh, I follow this very closely, and, you know, I just, I just don't get it. Uh, there's this company called uh, Aereo, kind of like Oreo, but it's Aereo, and uh, it's at the Supreme Court. I'm even shocked that it made it to that level of the judicial system in the United States. I, I am. I'm, I'm surprised. But essentially, uh, the Supreme Court will decide uh, the fate of Aereo, an Internet startup that's uh, fighting the TV industry with an old-school technology, the antenna. Technology reporter uh, Cecilia Kang of the Supreme Court, a Supreme Court reporter, and Robert Barnes explains uh, what you need to know about this technology. Uh, I will condense that for you right now, but the article will also be posted on the show notes. Essentially, Aereo has a, uh, a small antenna that you'll get when you purchase their box, or antennas, and they're the size of a dime. And uh, essentially what they do is they will take cable TV, uh, Cox, uh, you know, uh, Verizon, it goes on and on, all your, your, you know, Dish Network, whatever the case may be, and they will retransmit what it is that you want to watch. Uh, and they are retransmitting it, so obviously they've been brought to court for copyright violations because uh, you're paying real cheap to Aereo and uh, these you know, all the broadcasters who are in the traditional sense of cable TV are spending millions of dollars for the copyright law. So essentially what they're doing is, uh, it's kind of like the sling box. They're taking uh, what you're watching uh, on TV and for very cheap uh, with this new aerial box, they're going to retransmit what it is that you want to watch. And that boils it down very simplistically. Again, if you want more details, you go right into the article. But uh, they are in the Supreme Court right now. Everybody's kind of suing them. But uh, they maintain that they're not violating the copyrights and uh, they're just rebroadcasting something that's already public domain. So it will be very interesting uh, to, to see what happens. I will be shocked if, uh, if they don't shut them down. But uh, I'm hoping that uh, they let them go, but we'll see because it's going to definitely change the way you watch TV. And uh, I'm predicting that in the next two years, I don't even think it will be three years, the whole dynamic of how you watch TV will be changed, and uh, that's really what we need with the uh, inter Internet now and the ability to get fast speeds, I mean really fast speeds, certainly with the new Google Internet coming around shortly, and we're going to get a test of that in Arizona. I can't wait for that to come by. Uh, it's going to be, I think, 200,000 times, 200,000 times the speed of what they have now or some phenomenal number like that. So essentially it's, it's instantaneous, but... Uh, that technology is already here. In fact, people don't realize we're, we have one of the slowest internet speeds in the world, the United States. We are not the leader in speed by any stretch of the imagination. So long story short, I think what's going to happen is you're going to be able to go on to your TV set, as you do now, and all the new TV sets are internet capable. So the internet's actually, you know, through the Wi-Fi or through a, an Ethernet cord, you're able to watch TV. And, and what's going to happen, quite frankly, and the Roku box is almost there now. You're just going to click a button and watch what you want, when you want, how you want. And uh, they're going to start breaking up these monopolies that the uh, large companies have. And uh, I think you're going to see the prices go way down and the competition be ferocious. So uh, stick around. We'll see what develops on that. Now, speaking of uh, streaming services, uh, Amazon just struck a deal uh, just last this week, I think it was. 
And uh, now on the uh, Amazon Prime, if you're a member of Amazon Prime, you get the Amazon streaming TV for free as part of your Amazon uh, deal. But uh, now you can watch The Sopranos and The Wire. Amazon has added The Sopranos and The Wire to its library of TV shows uh, after signing an exclusive deal with HBO uh, to show these, uh, th these particular programs. The exclusive announcement on Tuesday marks the first time that Time Warner-owned premium cable uh, channel has struck a deal with an online video provider. Until now, HBO uh, owns its channels and its own shows were available uh, for purchase or DVD rental. Uh, starting May 21st, Amazon Prime Instant Viewer uh, Video Service will allow people to stream old HBO shows including Six Feet Under, The Wire, Big Love, and Deadwood, as well as early seasons of Broadwalk Empire, True Blood, and the miniseries, including Band of Brothers and John Adams. So uh, this article will be posted, and I miss The Sopranos. Uh, uh, I watch very, a very small amount of TV for a variety of reasons, but uh, I was hooked on The Sopranos. I hated the ending. I still hate the ending of The Sopranos. I want them to go back and rewrite it, but obviously uh, that can't be done at this point. Too bad. So. Let's move on. Speaking of Amazon, uh, Amazon is very uh, diligently and very rapidly uh, going to start, it's just a matter of time, folks, their own streaming service. And uh, Amazon.com uh, is considering an advertising-sponsored streaming television and music service, a departure from its strategy of linking video to its $99 per year prime subscription service, according to people close to the company. The, pro the proposed service, as Amazon has outlined it uh, to potential partners, could launch in the coming months and could feature original and licensed content, according to the spokespeople. Uh, so this is going to uh, be huge. Uh, make no mistake about it. Amazon is a brilliantly uh, run and executed company in every way, shape, or form. Uh, if I had to be a betting guy, uh, I'd be betting on Amazon, so we'll keep our eye on that and see what's going to happen with those guys. But uh, that's pretty exciting for sure. Let's get into some uh, cool stuff now. Uh, this is some freebies for you. Have you ever looked for a manual, and not only an electronic manual, could be any kind of a manual, but this is called Manuals Online, and you can access your manuals anytime, anywhere, and uh, they're free. So you just put in your product, and here's a bunch of them right here, Kenmore, Sony, Dell, Weber, Craftsman, Panasonic, Graco, Canon, GE, LG, Philips, on and on and on. And if you don't have the uh, manual, you can search the site and uh, maybe you'll find it. I never keep them. Now, this is a great, 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 great utility. Did I say that enough times? Uh, I was in a pinch yesterday and needed this app and I, I used it and it worked flawless. It's, first of all, it's free and it's called Compress PDF. Now, most of us have a program that will uh, condense the, uh, the PDF. That's a file that you would typically uh, cr uh, create from a Word file or a picture, or you can create it from anything, and it makes the file small, and that's typically what you would email to someone. And typically, you can lock down the PDF, so once someone gets a PDF document, uh, it's small, they can print it out, but uh, unless they have special software, you really can't alter it. So, uh, if I'm sending, uh, you know, credit applications or, or certain things that I have to get, letters, proposals, I'll use a PDF format and I lock it down, and that's been pretty safe. So yesterday uh, I had some documents that were actually 27 pages that I had to uh, send to someone, and the file, even in a PDF form, which is typically a small file, was too big for my email to accept it. Now at that point, you can put it in Dropbox, you can put it in a lot of other file services, but I wasn't comfortable with that, but I needed to shrink that PDF file even down from what the uh, software that I used to create it was. And I, I, I remembered a long while ago that I had found the site, and I, I, I did find the URL. I had it bookmarked uh, way back when. And it's called Compressed PDF. So what you do is you take your large PDF, and you just drop it, drag it, and drop it right in this box. And uh, you can choose the type of file that you wanted, and I wanted a PDF file, you can name it. And uh, you just click the button compress, and then it will compress it online, and then you will download it. So uh, you just drag and drop your PDF file in the box, wait for the, compressor to comp the compression to complete, and then you just click a button and it downloads it. It's perfect quality, it reduces your scanned PDF files 
uh, to a 144 dots per inch DPI, which is perfect for uploading files to the web and uh, through email. Uh, this is easy to use, it's totally free, and what I like about it is your files will be permanently deleted from the server after one hour. No one has access to the files and the privacy is 100% guaranteed. That's really important and it actually purges it from the server. So if someone doesn't get that email within the hour, it's gone, you've got to resend it. Uh, all platforms are supported so it doesn't matter whether you're on Mac or Windows or Linux or it just doesn't matter. And uh, uh, all the file compression takes place in their cloud which uh, will not consume any capacity from your own computer which is a minor point so I'll put this site up it's really good it will also do images to PDF if you have any photographs a uh, PDF to an image and it will merge PDF so it's a real handy site it's called smallpdf.com now everybody's uh, still writing and asking uh, the gadget professor questions about you know life after heartbleed and uh, you got to understand, and there's an article here that I, that I will post on the show notes, that your computer and the internet are, will never be safe. You need to understand there's nothing in this business that's 100% safe. When something goes online or in a cloud, it's not 100% safe. End of story. That's it. So this will give you some more information about what you can do uh, to take further precautions uh, about this horrific uh, virus called Heartbleed. Now, uh, the massive open SSL security hole was discovered earlier this month and it affected 66%, 66% of the entire internet. That is a huge amount. At the time of the discovery, 66% of the internet was affected. Most large websites have patched the bug by now and Heartbleed chatter across the web has uh, inevitably started to die down because it's been patched. But uh, as many security experts point out, uh, it, the internet will never be safe again. So my advice to everybody out there to make sure that you're extra safe, and I also have a pain in the neck, change all your passwords. Whatever your account, whether it's a banking account or a website account, whatever it is, I would urge you now is the time to change your passwords. And another uh, tip, make those passwords long. Don't make it like ABC or 123. You know, use your name, your address, and your phone number so you're, you know, you're getting a bunch of characters, and that makes it very hard for at least uh, it to be easily hacked. Let's put it that way. So uh, let's move on here. Now, this is something that uh, a lot of people are faced with. Uh, you know, do I buy a fax machine, or I need a fax machine, and I don't have a fax machine, or I only send out one fax a year, and it's a pain in the neck to spend the money to buy a fax machine, or my printer doesn't have the fax capability. No problem. Uh, here is a site, it's called Fax Zero, and uh, it's totally free. You could send a fax for free. Send faxes free to anywhere in the United States and Canada, or you can send an international fax for very cheap. So this is uh, basically, uh, you put your name in, your, you know, the, the, the company, the email, same thing for the receiving side. Uh, you can send a letter, uh, type it in there. You can use an, an attachment, uh, just click and attach, and uh, away it goes. Uh, Free fax is free. Uh, there's an ad on the cover page. Who cares? Uh, the maximum is three pages plus cover, and the max five free faxes per day. So if you don't do a lot of faxing, uh, that may be worth it for you because it's free. If uh, you want almost free, it's $1.99 uh, per fax, and you could pay by PayPal. And uh, the maximum is 25 pages plus an optional cover. Priority deliver versus free faxes. No ad on the cover page or no cover page at all, and that's a, a buck ninety-nine. So it's still pretty cheap, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper than buying your own fax machine. Now, the last uh, free app that uh, we're going to talk about today is called uh, uh, Viz Tumblr, and uh, this is a pretty intricate uh, uh, app. Uh, this is a, a Wi-Fi finder. If you want to find out every single Wi-Fi uh, uh, terminal, if you will, uh, that, that's in your area, this is what you use, and uh, it gives you the latitude and longitude, and uh, it's an insane app, so uh, this will go on your laptop, and uh, check it out, that's all I'm going to say. If, if, if you, if you want to know, uh, you know what's in your area, this is the app that you would want to use. And uh, now, uh, it gives me great pleasure to go directly to our, our, our gadget of the day, I've said this a million times, this is my absolute favorite gadget, and why is that? Well, 
First of all, price, uh, 49 bucks, uh, 49 bucks. Uh, this is the Roku stick, and uh, right here is what it looks like. Uh, it is a, a, a stick. I don't have it in my hand because it's actually plugged into the, uh, the monitor, and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, it's a USB stick at this point. It's a brand new uh, uh, configuration. You can see what the older configurations look like. On the back of the stick, there is a little small mini USB uh, port, and you get a power pack adapter. So you plug it in the wall, you plug the power pack into the back of the USB plug, and uh, you plug your USB into any empty USB outlet on your uh, TV, which is pretty simple to do. Or you can actually uh, get a different wire and power the, if you have a power USB plug, uh, it, will it will obtain its power directly from that. So you have your option. I, right now, am using the uh, power supply that came with the Roku box. Everything that you need comes in this package. And basically, this device, this small stick, will provide you with 31,000 movies. You got to find something that you like out of 31,000 movies. A thousand channels. You're in control. More movies, sports, news, music, kids shows, free channels than any other streaming player. That is absolutely true. Effortlessly control all your entertainment with the simple remote or free mobile app. So uh, essentially you get all the biggies. They come standard with this Crackle, Movies to Go, HBO to Go, Redbox, Instant, Vivo, Spotify, Fox Now, Plex, which we'll talk about in a minute, PBS, CNET, the History Channel is now on the Roku box. Dish World is now on the Roku box. UFC, Daily Burn, Ticket, NBC, iHeart. I can go on, again, for a thousand channels. I can, I can name these all day long. Now, this Roku stick will work on your wireless network. Very easy, and I'll show you what that looks like. Or if you have an Ethernet cable, you can't use it because the stick only works off, the USB stick only works off Wi-Fi. That's it. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll... Uh, We'll take a look at that, and by the way, I will mention that if you go to the Roku channel, uh, if you go to Roku.com, they do have a, uh, a great uh, comparison, uh, and it's, it's right on the Roku site, and it's Roku Streaming Stick versus Google's Chromecast Stick, and uh, obviously uh, the Roku stick one over the Chromecast stick and you can watch the review by uh, CNET. It's very well done and I'm not going to take the time to go through that but I will, I will do the review now. So uh, essentially we'll show you this live because I have the set all ready to go but this is streaming made easy. Uh, you're in control. Uh, what I like about this is uh, there's a powerful remote control. This is what the remote looks like. Uh, it has this little purple tag that doesn't pull out to put batteries in. The batteries uh, are essentially uh, two AA batteries go in the back. Uh, I've had these batteries uh, in one of the Roku boxes for two years, never changed them. So uh, that just slides on, simple enough. Uh, what I like about the new control is, uh, you can't see it, but uh, right here they have uh, movies to go. They have Amazon Prime, one click. They have Blockbuster, one click. And they have Netflix, one click. So if you don't want to do anything except watch Netflix, one click, bang, it brings you into the Netflix menu. That alone is very cool. You can play games on this. You can start, stop, pause your movies. Uh, very easy to get around with the remote control. Very easy. So that, that, that's a nice feature. Uh, now what they've done is they've added an app. So say goodbye to the couch huddle. Get all photos, songs, and videos you keep on your phone instantly on your TV. So it's similar in in that sense that, uh, like the Chromecast, you now can fling things onto your TV. The only two things you can fling are, uh, I believe it's Netflix and YouTube. But on the Roku app for your iOS, your Apple iPhone, or your Android, it lets you watch the vacation slides show right on the big screen for everyone to join and to join in and view on. And uh, again, it's just from your phone, and uh, you click a button with that free remote, and bang, it's on your TV. So that's kind of nice. What's a killer feature, and we'll show you this, is the Roku one-stop search. Of all the streaming devices out there, including Apple TV, the Chrome Stick, uh, uh, you, you name it, uh, there is not one box that compares even slightly to the power of the Roku search. You basically go in search, you type in what you want, and it will show you everywhere that you can watch that particular channel, everywhere that it's, that it's, that it's able to be streamed, and it's instantaneous, so the search feature is huge. It's very powerful, 
and uh, it works flawlessly. And uh, it's lightning fast. Uh, this is much faster. The, the stick is now three times faster than any of the other Roku products. Roku 3 is the most powerful, most responsive streaming player ever built. It features the latest wireless technology for even better performance and more rooms in the house and can stream a movie using less power th than a nightlight at 30 times less the, uh, the popular game console. So uh, that's pretty good, too. Uh, you can play Angry Birds on this. You also get a, uh, a slick uh, headset that comes with that. And uh, I don't see on the new remote, uh, on this remote, a... Oh, that's the Roku 3. Thanks, Mike. Mike yelled to me. Uh, on the stick version, you don't get the, uh, the headset, at least that I see, unless I mixed up the controls. I'll have to check on that. I'll get back to you on that. No? Okay, so Mike's telling me you don't get video games with the stick, and you don't get, well, you do get games, I'll show you that, but you definitely don't get the, uh, this is the right control, so you do not get the, the earpiece, not, not a big deal, at least for me. So let's, uh, let's switch to camera two, and I'm actually going to show you what the Roku box looks like. So what we're having now, so you understand, is I have camera two, which usually gives you a close-up of what's on my table here, but right now I have camera two focused on a, 42 inch LCD monitor which I use in the studio to watch what I'm doing while I'm broadcasting so if you see a little flicker there's nothing wrong with your with your reception at all or the, or the internet you're getting a flicker because there's a different frequency uh, synchronization between the TV which is scanning at, at, at 60 cycles per second if you will and the camera which is not scanning at that so you'll see a little flicker but you still will see how the box works so uh, let's take a look, and right now I've got to change that, so I'm going to go to source, and uh, I'm going to step this down because I have this set to HDMI 2, which is right here, and now we'll switch to camera 2. So there's the Roku, it's on, and nothing's happening because I've got to click the, uh, the on button. So there you go, and this is the menu that you're actually uh, uh, going to see when you turn the box on. So the first thing you want to do is go into your settings control, which is right here, and you're just going to scroll over and the first thing you need to do is set up your network and uh, it's very simple you're going to uh, uh, set up a new connection I'll just click this I'm not going to go through this but this is going to show you all the wireless uh, opportunities that you have in your home and uh, you'll pick out the one that you're on and you'll put your user your uh, uh, password in and, and, and very quickly you're set up to the network so that that's easy you have screen savers themes display modes, so you can uh, audio modes, sound effects, captions can be put on, uh, all kinds of things, time zone, uh, you can run through those at your leisure, it's very simple to do, and you also have system update, which is very important, because if you click the system update, it will actually go and tell you, I'm going to check now if there's any new updates, which frequently come out, and right now there is an update, I didn't even know that, but uh, there's three updates and it's actually doing the updates now. It's done the first one, now it's w updating the Weather Nation TV and I don't know what else. So any channels that you have popcorn flicks that have updates on that particular software within the Roku box, whatever channels you select, uh, that's all updated. So I'm, I'm done, I'm up to date, so now I'm ready to go. So I'm just going to go into my channels. Actually what we'll do is we'll go into the uh, store. So if you're new to the Roku, uh, you have the ability to go into the channel store, which is right here. And uh, now you can select any one or any amount of these channels. It's showing you the featured channels. Uh, you always want to check out the new channels because these are things that are brand new that have just come online. And uh, it's pretty cool. So if you want a particular channel or to, to preview it, you just scroll down. And uh, I happen to uh, be a big fan of Fox 25. I'm real happy I'm doing the show. I didn't even know that it was available. So I definitely want to watch uh, Fox 25 back in Boston. So uh, there's a rating, watch TV, uh, your latest Boston area news. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to put add to channel. So it's adding my Fox Boston news right now to my list of channels, and I probably have 100 channels already in there. So I'm just adding my Fox, and now that's in there. Now I have the ability to go directly to that channel, or I can go back and put something else. So I'll, for the heck of it, just preview. There it is, uh, Fox 25. And there's the news, weather, sports it will probably have. Yep, news, weather, sports. So if I want to go down to the news, and uh, these are the actual 
uh, different types of uh, uh, things that are being covered. I'm just going to click this. I'll click play, and I can watch the various news stories that are that are showing. Now, one thing that I will tell you that is brutally annoying to the gadget professor, but I understand it, is that every single thing that you go to watch, they're always going to run a commercial. And uh, CarMax, uh, I'm ready to shoot them uh, because I watch CarMax commercials all the time. So that's run its 30-second commercial, and there you go. Uh, there's there's uh, the live uh, news article that I wanted to see. That was at 9.43 uh, this morning. Right now I'm taping this. It's 11 o'clock in the morning here in Arizona. So uh, there it is, and i got to tell you, it looks just like I'm watching TV. The sound, uh, everything is... Uh, quite well done and uh, I just have no complaints in terms of quality. So I'll push the, uh, the home button, we'll go back and right now I I've shown you how to add a channel and now I will just go to my channels to just show you what I have. So I have Netflix, I have Hulu Plus and there's a couple things uh, I wanted to point out. You can run Pandora on this. Uh, there's the Fox News that we just added. Now I want to talk a little bit about Plex. Uh, Plex is one of many channels available on the Roku box that will allow you to tap into your computer and run anything that's on there, any videos, any movies, any, any slides, I shouldn't say slides, any photos that you have, any music, whatever's on your computer, you can, uh, if you will, marry or stream, the word is, to your computer. So Plex, as I mentioned many times on the Gadget Professor, is a server that I put on, it's totally free, onto my computer and I can connect through to, to that computer from this Plex channel. So if I were to click Plex right now, it will look for the uh, address of my computer, and uh, because I'm not at my computer now, I'm actually in the studio, uh, it's not going to find it because I'm not on the same network, uh, which is a drawback of Plex. It didn't used to be that way. So it's going to look for the Plex media server, but it's not going to find it. So there's the menu that I can use to fix it up. Now, the point I'm, I'm trying to make is that if you don't have Plex, there are probably 10 other channels, and I just noticed this, within the Roku setup that you can go to that are totally free that will allow you to access whatever's on your Mac, whatever's on your PC, whatever's on your Linux box, it doesn't matter. And these are the channels that you really need to use to take advantage of whatever you've put and stored on your computer in terms of movies, photos, and uh, music. It's very easy to do and as I said there's at least 10 different ways of doing that. So what you want to do is look through all the channels in the channel store, find out those, and they're, they're very easily marked, they're server channels, and I'll, I'll show you a couple other ones. So there's Plex. Now if you want to get to the Gadget Professor, I mentioned techpodcast.com, so if you click on that, which I will do, uh, techpodcast.com is where you will find us and uh, if you just click on Tech Podcast Video, and you, you can find us uh, on Tech News, but if you click over to, I think we're under Devices. Here we go, Devices. So as soon as you click on Devices and click down, uh, there we are, The Gadget Professor. And all our episodes are on there, and uh, you can watch us on the big screen if you like. So I will uh, scroll back. And I want to find a couple other channels that I want to point out to you that I find very interesting. Obviously, we know about YouTube. Crackle is a huge, huge channel with all kinds of free programming. I think you'll definitely enjoy that. Here's your Roku Media Player. That's one way you can, you can see the, the music, uh, the headphone, the, the photo, and the video. That's another way that you could tap into your computer, so check that out. PBS is now on the Roku box. My Media is another channel that will allow you to tap into your computer. So there's three that I've shown you already. Uh, Popcorn Flicks is phenomenal. It's free. There's all kinds of cool old movies. Twonky, another way for you to tap in to your computers and uh, serve up whatever's on your computers directly on the big screen on the Roku. So if you're in the living room and your computer's in the basement or wherever it is, you can actually watch on the Roku box whatever's on your computer. Twit, we all know about that. Uh, Livestream is very cool. Livestream is a large streaming company, probably the largest that's out there. They sell hardware and software and a great streaming uh, uh, capability. And if something's on Livestream, uh, you can actually watch it on your TV. So I'm going to try to close this out now. Vimeo, we're familiar with. Play, uh, this is another app that will allow you to watch whatever's on your TV 
uh, same thing with, with DS video. So as you can see, Drivecast, th there's tons of things that will let you couple with your computer. SmugMug is my favorite, hands down favorite way of sharing your photos with anybody in the world. So if you have a SmugMug account, you can actually go on your TV on the Roku box and watch that. So check this out, your sling box will work. Uh, one that's a lot of fun is the Drive-In Classics, and I'm going to end it here. I'm just going to click here. If you have nothing to do at night and you're sick of watching the same junk that's on, these are old drive-in movies. They're hysterical. They're a lot of fun. They stream up immediately. The quality of the Roku box is absolutely impeccable. And for 50 bucks, uh, what a great present it makes. And uh, also, it's one way right now, really. It's a viable way of cutting the cord if you're not married to a particular show. Uh, first, I would check to see if it's available on the streaming boxes, and I think you'll be very, very, very happy with the Roku at 49 bucks on Amazon or anywhere you want to buy it. Uh, you won't be unhappy with the Roku. So I hope I've given you a little insight as to uh, how great and useful and functional and easy to use the Roku stick is, and uh, I think you'll, you will absolutely love it. So that will wrap it up today for The Gadget Professor. I look forward to seeing everybody next Thursday evening. So long from The Gadget Professor. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor.